Why would you blow up a whale? In 1970, the sleepy town of Florence, Oregon witnessed one of the most bizarre news spectacles ever recorded. The infamous exploding whale incident. The story unfolds on November 9th when a giant lifeless sperm whale washed up on Florence Beach, approximately a mile from the South Jetty. With a weight of 8 tons and a length of 45 feet, it was as large as a typical school bus. The behemoth of a carcass had been lying on its side, languishing under the sun's heat for days. And as the putrid stench of decay filled the air, it was clear drastic action was needed quickly. The Oregon Department of Transportation had jurisdiction over the state's beaches back then, so it was up to them to figure out how to remove this monstrosity. And since whale beachings were an extremely rare occurrence on the Oregon coastline, no one could really remember how the last beaching, reportedly back in 1910, was taken care of. Burying the whale was considered, but authorities were concerned the ocean tides would eventually uncover it. Another option was cutting up the carcass for removal, but it came with logistical and nauseating challenges, like finding brave volunteers and specialized equipment. And allowing the whale to decompose naturally was a slow process, with potential health hazards and lingering foul odors. With few options left, a daring plan emerged to clear the beach of this rotting monstrosity by blowing it into smithereens. A decision that would ultimately result in a catastrophic comedy of errors. As the whale's stench permeated the coast, a crowd gathered, morbidly curious about the decaying leviathan. News crews hovered, hungry for a headline story. Among them was reporter Paul Lindman, expecting a fluff piece but getting far more than he bargained for. The Oregon State Highway Division not only had a whale of a problem on its hands, it had a stinking whale of a problem. What to do with one 45-foot, 8-ton whale dead on arrival on the beach near Florence? The official in charge, Highway Department Engineer George Thornton, told Lindman Dynamite had solved plenty of problems in the past, and he had a strategy. Well, I'm confident that it'll work. The only thing is we're not sure just exactly how much uh, explosives it'll take to disintegrate this thing so the scavengers, seagulls and crabs and whatnot can clean it up. After consulting with U.S. Navy and munitions experts, authorities agreed it was worth a shot using half a ton of explosives. The excavation began as explosives experts meticulously placed 20 50-pound cases of dynamite around the whale. As the suspense built, the crowd was moved back a quarter of a mile to a safe distance. Thornton's strategy was to treat the whale like a boulder and blast the remains toward the ocean where the tide could do its cleanup job. He assured doubters they would simply vaporize the carcass into manageable chunks for scavengers. Meanwhile, a passerby with explosives training stumbled on the scene while driving his newly purchased Oldsmobile. He warned the highway division that they needed fewer explosives to push the whale out to sea, or significantly more to obliterate it into tiny, chewable whale nuggets. Despite his suggestions, the detonation proceeded as planned. What happened next was sheer pandemonium. The loud blast launched the whale's massive right side 150 feet into the air. Whale matter and sand erupted into the sky like an exploding volcano. Spectators on the dunes watched in awe as the mammal disintegrated. But humor quickly turned to panic when, instead of small bits, chunks of whale meat launched dangerously toward the spectators. Spectators shrieked and stampeded for cover as the monstrous slabs of seared flesh crashed around them. When the news crew realized they weren't far enough away, they also started running. And this stuff starts hitting the ground. Boom, 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 boom. And all of a sudden you realize, my God, I could be killed by whale blubber here. Worst of all was the wretched stench of vaporized innards, heaving stomachs in its wake. Or as news crews put it, the smell was horrible, but when they blew the thing open, it was twice as horrible. Among the chaos, one casualty stood out. A car parked 450 feet away was suddenly crushed under a lump of whale the size of a coffee table. 
Ironically, the brand new Oldsmobile belonged to the passerby who tried to warn the authorities. He could only watch in horror as his prized car was reduced to scrap metal. It was a neat car. I just got it from Dunham's and it was a Regency. And, and like I say, the funny thing about their, their, their slogan is it was a whale of a deal. Within two days, the state of Oregon reimbursed the owner for the full retail value of his car. Amazingly, no one was injured. The aftermath called for further action. Thornton inspected the scene, finding pieces of whale strewn about and blubber powder sprinkled everywhere. Or, as newsman Lindman put it, The blast blasted blubber beyond all believable bounds. The blast also carved a massive hole into the beach. A significant portion of the whale remained, which was eventually moved and buried with the help of a bulldozer. Smaller bits of blubber were collected and either discarded or covered in sand. The seagulls, initially expected to feast on the remains, were scared off by the explosion and remained wary of the area for some time. In the mid-1990s, engineer Thornton was contacted by Lindman but declined to be interviewed on camera. He believed that the news coverage of the event had turned a successful operation into a disaster. When asked if he wanted to reveal what had gone wrong that day, Thornton responded tersely, suggesting that nothing had in fact gone wrong. For Lindman, the segment he hesitated to produce became somewhat of a historical phenomenon. I was asked about it virtually every day of my life or commented about it. That was life and there was definitely a time when I was sick of hearing about it, but I got over it. According to 2006 figures, the video has been watched over 350 million times over several platforms. The tale of the exploding whale was a cautionary one. In 1979, when 41 sperm whales beached themselves and died on a beach south of Florence, the possibility of blasting the carcasses to bits with dynamite was quickly passed over. Authorities burned and buried the carcasses instead. Oregon's current policy is to bury dead beached whales in the sand. In a display of collective humor, Florence residents christened their latest recreational area as the Exploding Whale Memorial Park in tribute to the infamous event that took place more than 50 years ago. The exploding whale may have left a mess on the beach, but it also made a whale of a tail. Watch this episode next if you found this video interesting. Please add a like and leave a comment if you want to support the channel.